Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And we are back with another back. clan invasion. Bat rat! I'm so excited. Uh, so yeah. tonight, Tom, we have your beautifully painted Jade Falcons. Jade Falcons. They you're, are here. You're just saying that so I keep painting, I think. You just want me to keep going. They're so good. You know how it's going. They're so good. I can't wait to see what you do in, uh, in Wave 2 or with the rest of Wave 1 that you have. All the Inner Sphere mechs. A little calm star, a little he mercenaries it. coming. Yeah. He promised it. Uh, so Jay Falcon, yeah. they have invaded uh, a planet on the very, very fringe of Commonwealth space called Anywhere. Anywhere. It's the name of the planet. It's called Not Anywhere. Not to be confused with here. Which is a, right, which is which, an adjacent planet. Yeah, uh, or adjacent system, I guess. But anyway, uh, we're, we're in Anywhere, and uh, the, the Lyran regulars have a small vehicle detachment here uh, garrisoning the planet. Uh, and on emergency notice, uh, they have called in the Avatar Knights, a mercenary unit, uh, who has been making their way up to the clan front, uh, you know, since the late... Just to get point. paid? Yeah. Is, that's all they're, they're, they're here to right? get paid. But, but really, they're here to defend the Inner Sphere. But also get paid. Because why not do both? You're such uh, a paladin. Can't help it. Squash it's, it's, the clan it's in that blood. Yeah. So we got we have some exciting stuff tonight. We have some really really uh, great forces lined up. So in our last battle report, it was with sort of Kevin. Our, with Kevin, yeah. right? It was our first foray. We did a five on eight. We did all max. Um, Heard it went well. It went well for me. Uh, it went well for me. So there was some conversation. Uh, there were some there were some some dice questions there. Uh, <laughs> nice. And you can get resolved. I mean, I did. So I did roll. The ghost bear dice, the pair, oh. and the combine dice. I rolled them fifty times. We're talking. We're talking about the Kickstarter dice. Kickstarter dice. Oh, okay, yeah. I rolled them fifty times each. I was just like on a conference call. Yeah. And I was just like rolling them. And every time I rolled a six on either one, I would mark it down. At the end, it was a two to one ratio of combine to to ghost bear. That is uh, not wow. statistically insignificant. I mean, I guess it's not out of the realm of probability. But what'd you get there? Three. A three. These dice are okay. Well, the, the Jade, Jade Falcon dice are pretty good. We'll see. We'll find out tonight. I am not they're all, using... They're all a little leaning. Th those, that pair is definitely warped. Yeah. And, you know, Catalyst did, did uh, you know, they're doing the right thing. They're trying to get it fixed. Yeah. Um, he, they were not sitting there pouring dice. They I don't blame them for it. Yeah. I don't blame them either. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm not using those dice tonight. I've got yeah. some regular dice. I won't either. And then for, well, we can use them for initiative, maybe. I don't know. Or just keep them on your, for good luck. We should drill them. You can hang them on so your dash. So I, I have this over your mirror. Thought in my head that he probably rolled these fifty times too, and it was like all ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, no, just go ahead and use, use them. Time, use them. Fine. All the other ones, not good. These ones. Oh Perfect. God. Uh, all right. So anyway, yeah, we're losing viewers. Where are we at? Right? Yeah. We're, we're losing viewers. All right. So tonight we've got a pitch battle. No, I lied. We've got a seize ground. Seize ground. Yeah. Uh, seize ground is where we divide the map into four quadrants, uh, and basically. We're trying to take as many quadrants zone, uncontested. Right? That's right. There's a little dead zone in the middle. Um, I think you guys, if, if you've watched for, for a while, you'll know this mission. This is one of the bread and butter missions. So it should showcase the mobility of the clans and that long range capability. Uh, we are playing with visibility rules. However, uh, there's no weather. So unless your line of sight is completely blocked, you know, by terrain or something along those lines, you'll, you'll be able to see the other unit. So it depends on where we deploy, how crafty we get, um, whether or not, you know, a unit is obscured. So that will be interesting. Okay. And you do have a unit that does have a probe on it. Um, I have no sensors whatsoever. Um, but speaking of forces, shall we? Shall we talk about what we've got? Let's do it. So I brought Jade Falcon from uh, the Delta and the Omega Galaxy. So I have a Vulture from each. I've got one Vulture Prime and one Vulture C. Um, they're both packed in like pretty good range. Um, pretty psyched about these guys. They were probably my favorite mechs out of the Kickstarter anyway. And then uh, I got a Storm Pro Prime, uh, an Adder Prime, a Miss Lynx Configuration B, and then I think the first time we're playing them, some Elementals. We have uh, two five-man Elemental and I and I picked flamers. I've never. I don't think we've ever played with flamers on mechs or anything yet. We certainly never hit with them, or hit with them. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. So on my side, so I have again. I've got a vehicle lance, 
and then I've got a mech land. So the vehicles, I'll start there. So the vehicles here I've got are a Manticore heavy tank, an SRM carrier, and two, two bulldogs uh, with some LRMs. So um, LRM carriers. Yeah, they're not they're not full blown LRM carriers, but they're they're a little tougher. Uh, they're a little faster, but they don't do as much damage. So you know they're they're pretty tough. The bulldogs are a great sort of low cost unit in my opinion. Um, the Manticore is pretty beefy, and the SRM carrier. You know, I'm just going to hide that, and when things come into my into my domain, I plan on unleashing it, as it does do six damage at short and medium. Lots of SRMs on this guy. Uh, so on my mech lance, this is a, a fifth Atrian Knights lance, right? And of course, they in their lore uh, defect from the Free Worlds League. They they move uh, into a mercenary status, so they can go do battle with the clans to defend the Inner Sphere. Uh, and uh, so I've got uh, basically a, a pretty heavy slash assault lance led by Broadsword in his Marauder 3R. Uh, we've yeah. got the Archer 2R. So this is these are all, by the way, these are all new sculpts as of Game of Armored Combat or newer. Uh, I've got an awesome 8Q. That's Athena. Uh, and then I've got a brand new King Crab. This is courtesy of Polygon Masterworks. I absolutely love this model. It's gigantic. It's so big. It's so big. It makes the it makes the awesome blush. Um, Athena is afraid to be next to this thing. So it is the it is a, it is a new tech one though. So it's a it's a zero zero one. It's got some Gauss rifles. What? Um, it does. Listen, this what? is maybe Comstar gave this to us. Maybe Dude, Comstar, Lord. all right, hooked me up. Like that happened in the cartoon. I'm pretty sure. They like gave Comstar gave uh, Steiner like a bunch of mechs, right? I don't know. It was great. Someone it's has like to an eat. Iran Contra. Thing. <laughs> so uh, that's Stopper and the King Crab. So that's mm -hmm. my that's my mech lance. So they are they are here and they are ready to take down some Jade Falcons. So we'll see. This is going to be a slugfest. I'm scared. I've already uh, uh, prepared my concession speech and my excuses for why I'm going to lose this. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm just saying. These also. Climax are expensive. Whew. I mean, they're really expensive. Woo. I mean, Tom expensive. and I were actually looking, like, intensively for the last few days at Force Lists. Um, and, you know, and I actually have Alpha Strike Battleitics, like, coded. It's done on an individual level. I need to scale it out to, like, Lance v. Lance and Star v. Star. But I'm telling you, like, a lot of these I don't think are going to be very efficient. And I was talking with some guys on Patreon and also in chat on the comment section and on Discord. I think the issue is, like, you have, these mechs have all kinds of abilities, right? You know, ECM, you have probes, you have recon. And these things jack up the base value of the, of, you know, the PV of the, of the mech at skill four. Yeah. And when you go up to, like, skill one or two you're paying a percentage, right? You're paying a tax on all this equipment that literally has nothing to do with the skill of the mech, right? Yeah. Like even the TMM has nothing to do with the skill of the mech. Like, you know, you could make the argument, well, it gets in faster, so can you, eh, I don't buy it. Like, it's a defensive trait, you know? TMM's a defensive trait. You pay out the nose for a TMM3 mech, which all the clan mechs are basically twos, threes, or better. So it's, it's sort mm -hmm. of this interesting paradigm where, you know, you have to take better pilots because it fits the lore. But then you're also paying a ton of points. Yeah, we talked a lot about like not so. taking, you know, like right. baselining one two for yeah. for clan pilots. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean you have all twos. Yeah. Kevin had a bunch of ones last week, and I think it was totally fruitless. So interested to see how this one goes. Yeah, I'll, I'll make another bold proclamation to start. Bold it, statement. It tends to be that you either make it or you don't. It's like. It's like usually boom or bust a lot of yeah. the time. Like yeah. you're rolling 12, so you're rolling like three. Well, depends on if you're and using the Kickstarter dice or not. Yeah. Oh, zing. <laughs> Let's see. You got a three. Oh! That's nice. That's a lot of Jade Falcons right there. A lot of Jade Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, guys, going. Battle Grid of Anywhere is coming right up. Stay tuned. The blood is about to flow. <laughs>
this is Star Commander Thomas of the Clan Jade Falcon. What forces dare defend this city from my talons? Well, I'm glad you asked. We got a uh, cargo truck and a forklift. Is that gonna work for you? Insolent Freebooter. All units, this is Broadsword. Power up, weapons hot, and check in. Stop her here. This is Athena. Pick the target. Prodigy. I'm ready. Uh, vehicle support standing by. Alright, let's take it to these chain wackos. It's time to teach these gits a lesson. wasteland of anywhere uh, perhaps on one of the near one of the polar caps a uh, small city uh, here uh, that is of interest perhaps of the Jade Falcon or maybe this is just where they decided to land and issue their uh, <laughs> their batch off <laughs> freaking crazy clanners uh, so I will be deploying on this side I am the defender on uh, on this mission here technically so I get to pick side uh, but I also need to deploy first. Tom deploying over there on that side. So we'll have a little bit of city between us, uh, which could give some interesting line of sight opportunities. Uh, and then up here on the uh, the highlands, this hill, um, it's a level four, or level five hill. Uh, there's just nothing but some some scattered terrain, uh, some strange alien rock formations. But guys, stick around. Turn one is coming right up. We're just going to move right on the board for deployment. And we'll be right back after that. All right, here we are after turn one. That lone objective marker in the middle, representing the dead center of the board. Around that, there is a dead zone. Uh, so on my side, moved out here, I have one lone vehicle on the far flank. It's out of line of sight of everybody. Four mechs in the middle that are about to be revealed very shortly. And then a trio of vehicles making their way into the downtown area. On the Jade Falcon side, Tom, what do we got here? What do we have here indeed? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I moved two, two of my units up on the hill, and then the rest are sort of spreading out through uh, the two quadrants. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, same thing. So I got down at eye level on my mechs. I cannot see that vehicle. This one here is yeah. hidden. And then two of the vehicles in the far corner are also still remained in mystery tonight. All right, so this is, this is in line of sight? This um, one, this back, back one, yeah. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to reveal that on camera here. Dun, that dun, is a dun. Dun, 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 that is a bulldog. So because it is clear skies today and there's no weather, it's unlimited. It's actually 60 inches, I believe, of uh, visibility. So if we can draw a line of sight to it, it will be revealed. Tom, you can see all of these mechs as well, right? Yeah, I can see everything all except right. for those two carriers. Well, I'm going to reveal see what all are. of these mechs here. This is God, broad so sword big. in his Marauder. I know. Look at these oh. beautiful new models. Uh, I have Prodigy in his Archer. This is a new Terrifying. new add to the Atrian Knights. Uh, I've got... Look at the size of this thing, Tom. I mean, Speaking of absurd. gigantic, it's so big. It's so meaty. Uh, and then, of course, I have Athena here in her awesome. So, got the Atrian Knights. We have five of the eight revealed. 
<laughs> extra mechs appear on the board. So I saw <laughs> three, uh, three vehicles here incognito. So Tom, what do you have on your side? Yeah, so... I can see everything, right? You can see everything, that's right. So we have my adder coming up the center. Mm, and I might good. as well put the vulture in with him, who's right here. Um, beautiful, who's, beautiful. This is number four, so that's my missed links alt config. Beta. Beta. <laughs> well, I can't do the voice from the, oh, from the, the video game. Yeah. Alt config A or B. That's so good. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if I have that sound bite somewhere. And then, um, then my other vultures up here. Ah, uh, you're keeping the and Stormcrow Prime. Keeping the the clan subtypes together here. Very yeah, they nice. don't they don't get along super great yet. No, not they're not they're not. You have to socialize there. them first for a couple of days. <laughs> like with chickens, you have to like let them see each other, but keep them behind a, a fence so they yeah. Don't ask how Tom knows this, guys. But listen, that is the uh, that's the end of turn one. So some strategic movement onto the map as we're moving in on the blind. Uh, but now, obviously, some decisions to be made. Uh, so turn two is coming right up. Let's see how those initiative dice are treating me this game around. Stay tuned. All right, here we are on the icy tundra. Sun glaring overhead here as these two forces move in to do battle. Now, on the side of the Avatar Knights uh, and the, the Lyran regulars. I think I said guard earlier. Very confusing. It's the Lyran regulars. Uh, they're the ones that are olive drab. So those dudes, the vehicles, uh, continued their advance into the city here. Uh, one manticore now revealed up here. And then my main mech lance, the Avatar Knights, moving forward. The Marauder sprinting down this alleyway. Uh, the Archer sort of sweeping around behind King Crab and Athena in that awesome... Uh, all looking at, uh, at some central targets here. Now, debating on what to shoot, uh, but I do get to shoot first. So before I do, though, Tom, yeah, talk to me about your movement. Same thing. Just got to get in range. So <clears throat> my mech's up on the hill. Again, just sprinted forward. They were just kind of too far out of range yeah. to do anything. Um, again, straight up the center of the board, and then the missed links... Alt config B <laughs> uh, sprinted his way into the in the city. He's looking for directions. Yeah, you know he's lost. He's yeah. going to stop at the nearest gas station. And he's on Broad Street now. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty sure he should turn right. Oh my goodness! Right into a wall of bulldogs. <laughs> uh, all right, so I think I want to start with my king crab, uh, and the king crab is is targeting that adder. Now I am at extreme range, Tom. Uh, and extreme range is a plus four modifier with our long range targeting. The King Crab uh, stopper doing three points. It's so brutal. So, he is a skill three, he's a veteran. Uh, so I'm going to need a three, six, seven, eight, I believe, is all I'm going to need. He's skill two or three? Three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I only have one skill two guy. Uh, that is Broadsword and the Marauder. All the vehicles are skill four. So, here we go. Looking for eights. And then the nines. Well, I got uh, a seven, a nine, and a ten. So, either way, I got two points of damage yeah. on that adder. All right, so calling in the coordinates, my manticore spotting for the archer. The archer does not have clean line of sight to anything. So, he does have IF2. Uh, so, at extreme range, that goes down to IF1. And I'm going to need a 10 to hit here. Tom was right on the last time. I don't know. My math was failing me. I needed a 9 to hit uh, with the King Crab, but it worked out anyway. Um, so here we go. I need a 10 to hit with the Archer. That is not going to do it. All right. So I was trying to get that Adder with Athena, but she's at 32 inches. It's a hard shot. It's a hard shot. So my only shot here, Tom, is against the Vulture. Uh, the Vulture C, I believe. That uh, vulture is the vulture prime. I don't know the difference. Here we go. Tens. Ugh. Yeah, definitely not happening. All right, so that Some concludes the shooting for the inner sphere. So moving over to Clan Jade Falcon. Okay. So Jade Falcons are up. Uh, my vulture and my adder are both shooting at the king crab. Mm. Um, it's going to go for the awesome. However, 
the very cool spiky uh, slag. Are the slag types the ones from the ground? Yeah, I guess. Slag mites? I'm not really sure. I don't know either. Well, whichever one. Yeah, so I need sevens to hit. Uh, so, you know, piloting two, extreme range, and a one TMM. So here we go. First shot from the vulture. All right. Definitely not going to hit with that. All right. And then the adder is up next. Right, fail me now. Whew. Close, but. Two ones on the pilot. Unbelievable. So PPC fire just blasting all over the place. Missiles sailing over the head of the king crab. Oh. So that is it, Tom. Your other forces have sprinted and presumably elementals are dangling off <laughs> something here. Yeah. Uh, but that is it, guys. Turn two is a wrap. So we will be right back with turn three. Okay. Um, J Falcon's lost initiative, so we'll be firing first. The Stormcrow Prime will be firing down the hill at the Awesome. They're at long range, uh, so it's piloting two, five, six. So I need sixes to hit. That will all hit. Oof. All right, so that's four points to that Awesome. Uh, yeah, on that last shot, it was actually the Vulture who does uh, four on long range. The Stormcrow only does two. Okay. They have the same modifier, right, same, so same target number. Yeah. So still four points on that awesome. Yeah. Uh, coming in from the vulture. Now the storm crow. Now the storm crow. Yeah. Got it. Shorting for two. So here Climax so confusing. So, All right. Two more points. points. Yeah. Two more points, man. That awesome down about seventy-five percent on its armor. Klaxons, no doubt, uh, blaring me, me, in me, 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 exactly me, me, me. in that cockpit. All right. So time yourself some more mechs to shoot. I do, yeah. Um, up next would probably be the adder. Two points? Yeah, two points. So again, so that's uh, six, seven. So I need sevens. Uh, Piloting yeah. two. Yeah, wow. Man, that's seven. Seems too easy. Seems too easy. Yeah, well, we'll see. That'll hit. Ooh. Okay, and last but certainly not least is my vulture. Um, he's the config C. He'll do three at long range to the awesome. So we're just gonna keep it going. Um, same thing, so t um, skill two, three, and three, so sixes. All right, any hit here will be a critical hit, Tom. So that is three points internal, uh, and you get to roll up 2d6 for a critical hit. Here it comes. Six. Critical hit. Seven. Weapon oh, destroyed. Good. Yep, so one of those PPCs knocked out. That awesome, not in great shape. But that does wrap up shooting for the Jade Falcons. Indeed. All right, so on to the Avatar Knights and the, uh, the Lyran regulars over there. So we'll see if they can deal some damage. That Manticore in range now. Here we go. All right, so Athena is up in her awesome, shooting at the adder. Uh, she's taking a weapon hit, enforced withdrawal. It is, uh, it's bad news. So she needs nines to hit this adder. So here we go, looking for those nines. Man, I just uh, do not have the luck tonight. Stop her in this nice, shiny new king crab, blasting gauss rounds across at the adder. Uh, I'm going to need eights to hit here. I'm at long range, and I do four damage here. This is pretty meaty. Here we go. Looking for eights. Need some luck. All right, so not bad. That's three shots, Tom. Three shots on the adder, uh, and I am going to roll up a critical hit here, as I believe that is internal. Enemy mech destroyed. Well, that is just... Killed. So that is a Gauss rifle through the head, and I believe someone in the comments said Alpha Strike sucked because you don't get those epic headshots. Tom, your reaction? It's an epic headshot. <laughs> it's an epic headshot, guys. Uh, so it happens in Alpha Strike. There it is, a Gauss rifle to the head. All right, these uh, these stinking Lyrans. Uh, he needs a ten to hit, firing down at that vulture with the uh, turret mounted gun. Just one point of damage at extreme range. Again, looking for tens. Here we go. All right, Archer, firing at that Vulture. Trying to take out that middle uh, of this this broad little formation you've got going on, this pincer maneuver you're trying to pull. So the uh, Archer does 
three points of damage at long range. He is a veteran, skill three. Uh, so, going to need eights here to hit if my math serves me right. So, here we go. God, another one on the pilot die. Hard to come back from that. Yeah. It's just hard. Oh, I need those. Uh, where are those catalyst dice? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> bring, bring back those. Oh, man. All right, well, guys, that is the end, I believe, of turn three. I have no more shots. The Marauder, um, we actually really didn't do a movement recap here, but the Marauder just kind of sprinting through the uh, through the city there, trying to get him on the other side into that back quadrant over there. Same thing with my little vehicle convoy. So no one else able to shoot. Um, now, one special thing. We did actually go back to the rules. We did get a lot of comments and also some messages in Patreon about forced withdrawal. Uh, some guys really into using morale as mm. a uh, as a way uh, to I manage am. manage withdrawal. Yeah. So Kevin and I and Tom were talking, and what we decided was that uh, you would double your skill as the base target number. So for example, Athena is a veteran, skill three. So her base target number is a six. She did take damage this turn. So that's a seven. And she does have a critical hit. This happens in the end phase, so any damage or crits in the combat phase apply. That's another plus one. So she needs to beat an eight. If she beats an eight, she can stay on the battlefield, Tom. If she rolls less than an eight, she's got a break. She's breaking and running. So looking for an eight or better, here we go. A six. six. A six. A six. Nice. A six is not going to do it. So now, did we modify and force the draw to where they have to move like their full movement back? Full movement so back. Okay. If you fail morale, no more you're, one inch. Yeah, no or... more. Well, yeah, and we kind of amended that to half speed, but even that was kind of cheesy. So very cheesy. You know, this way it's sort of like your pilot can either hold their ground yeah. or they're going to run. Right in a campaign, you're going to want to probably get that mech off the field. Uh, any way to keep it in one piece and salvageable. Like, I'm probably going to move her back into cover to try to, you know, do some things. Now, even in withdrawal, uh, she can't contest, right, normal rules, like your units can't hold objectives and things like that, whether you make your morale test or not. Um, the morale test really just depends. Do you have to break and run, or can you stay on the table? So, uh, that said, guys, that wraps up turn three. We're going to roll initiative on uh, right here now for turn four, and then we'll be back. All right, here we are, turn four. Uh, so it is still, still zero, zero. Um, Tom and I have been talking a lot about balance in between turns here and, you know, the advantages of clan mechs and the disadvantages of clan mechs. Lots to talk about in the after action report, but Tom did lose initiative. Uh, didn't so. Mean. Yeah, and so then I, you know, I had to move first and I also get to shoot first. So again, you know, these guys up on the hill, there's really nowhere for them to go but forward. Um, the vulture cut across, taking the place of the adder for the most part at the moment. The smoldering adder. Yeah, because, you know, my miss Lynx is, is kind of very glass cannony, yeah. and uh, he needs some support or a, a, a plan B to get away. Yeah. So that's about it. And now that we are within scanning range, we can see there are elementals mounted to the Stormcrow and the Mistlinx, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, yes, Tom? Yes, that is correct. All right, so let me just recap what I did, and then we can get into shooting. So on the side of the Avatar Knights and the, uh, the regulars, so we've got Athena. She failed her morale check, is in forced withdrawal now, uh, moving back towards the table edge, has to make... Basically, her, her standard move, three inches. Now, are we making that morale check every turn? Every end phase, they have a chance to rally. Cool. Uh, so, this King Crab here, stationary, not moving. Training his guns on one of those unfortunate clan mechs. Uh, the archer sort of strode into cover there behind the building, bracing himself, potentially sending missiles up that hill. We'll see. Broadsword in his marauder, uh, continuing the advance, but stopping, torso twisting, does have line of sight also up that hill. Uh, and then down here in the meat grinder. So all the uh, the vehicles are revealed here because that mislink's able to see that that lead bulldog, uh, which then of course by process of elimination, we know that the, the one in the back there is the SRM carrier. Uh, so they're coming around. Uh, they did not realize that there were elementals mounted on that, that mislink. So they're a little concerned right now, uh, but we'll see. You know, the bulldogs are pretty tough, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, so Tom, yeah, shooting. 
Okay, first up, the Stormcrow. Uh, medium range to the Manticore. Um, we'll need fives to hit it. Um, two, four, five. So, here we go. Wow, I missed it. So four points of damage. Woo. So that rocks the mana core. Now, Tom, you do also get a motive hit uh, on all vehicles. Anytime they take damage, you can roll 2d6 and see if you get an adverse effect. You're looking for a nine or better, I believe. Yeah. Actually, maybe it's a, it's a nine or better, I think. So there's no motive hit there on the Manticore. Uh, looking good so far, but the Vulture, that nasty, nasty Vulture, eyeing him up. Okay, last up uh, against that Manticore is the Vulture. Uh, he's got the same, I believe it's a five. And, okay. Uh, so four points on him. But jeez. Two points. Man. Okay, so. Uh, that is five points of damage in total this round, right? You did three, uh... Four and three. Okay. Four and two. Four and two. Four and two. Six. So it's six points in total to that mana core. So the armor is stripped, so moving on now... Does that get a motive hit as well? Oh yeah, good good call, good call, good call. It does. I always forget that, Tom. Always. Oh, I don't know how these dice are treating me right now, but... Is that Ten. Ouch. Ten is All right, a minus so that one. is a minus one. Track is blown. Manticore is in tough shape. All right, moving down the Jade Falcon line. Okay, um, now my main vulture, Vulturk, since he's the C, he'll be firing. <laughs> Vuljerk is more like it. Vuljerk. Vuljerk. <laughs> um, he'll be firing at the standstill crab. That's really his best target. Bad move. I, I know. Clanner. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about firing at the Manticore, but it's just, it's an extreme it's range. vehicle, you know? Well, I, yeah, I just don't think I could really do much. All right. Well, King Crab it is. Yeah. What do you It's a need? little bit better of a shot. So I'll have three shots on it. Um, okay. That would be uh, five, five. All right, here we go. Coming so in. three for five. Get a close up here on, on this miss, this epic miss. <laughs> Uh, all three hit. Ugh. All right, three points to that King Crab. So if Kevin's watching, Kevin, this is how it's done. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just melting things left and right here, these clan guns uh, not getting tired. So the King Crab taking three, the Manticore stripped, also <laughs> enforced withdrawal, and still we have this Mist Lynx over here in the city tucked away. Let's see if it has line of sight, what it can do. Okay, and my Mist Lynx off on his own. Um, it's just around in the corner to these tanks, and we'll have uh, line of sight but cover. So he's going to need sixes to hit at medium, right? That is correct, and, okay. and we, we house rule cover for vehicles as well. Um, you know, and, and the rules is written. Shockingly, Tom, there's no, there's no partial cover for vehicles right. uh, in upstrike, as far as I recall. So anyway, uh, so they, they are going to get that partial cover bonus, so go ahead and roll that up. Okay. So sixes. God, how many? Jeez. Four. So many dice. All of them will hit. All right, that is a motive hit and a critical hit. You went internal and put that bulldog into withdrawal. Okay, so um, motive hit first. Motive hit first. All right. Nothing. Nothing. And yeah. critical hit. A seven. seven. That's so nothing, right? What is that on a oh. on a vehicle? It's nothing. It is nothing. <laughs> All right. So thankfully, it just blows through the armor, uh, but that bulldog now needing to take a morale test. Uh, at the risk of going into force withdrawal here. So we'll see what happens. But of course, the Valiant Avatar Knights and their, uh, their Commonwealth allies do get the strike back first. So stay tuned, that's coming right up. All right, we're back in the gauntlet here. The, the Bulldog returning fire at that Miss Link. So I need nines. Um, partial cover, their skill four, etc., etc., etc. Three. All I need is three nines, Tom. Oh, I'm turning red, I think, right now. I can feel it. I can feel Look at this face. nice piece of terrain. That's a beaut. Yeah, it totally fits in with the city theme you got going on. Yeah, here. it's like a, you know, like a storage dome. Oh, like, like one of those gas domes. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or maybe or, salt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's salt, right? Salt. It's, <laughs> it's for when they need to plow the highways. <laughs> it, is a, it is an icy world. Oh, my God. That's too good. All right, here we go. Looking for nines. <sighs> oh, my God, dude. I felt nines coming, too. I was so worried. There was nothing coming. There was nothing. 
Can't, All right. My heart can't take this thing. <laughs> can't take it. Move it on down the line. All right, here we go. Stopper in the King Crab. Needs eights to hit. So uh, stationary. Actually, wait a minute. Needs sevens to hit, Tom. Is it possible? Let's Yikes. Take three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need sevens to hit at long range. Okay, sevens to hit at long range. This is, this is juicy. Four points. Another Gauss head kill. Here it comes. Three, three points of damage, no critical hit. Here we are, Prodigy. It's called Prodigy because he's a math whiz, Tom. Oh, I was thinking uh, because of the, the band. The band? Yeah. It's uh, so I ran the numbers and went to overheat. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm at medium range, needs sevens to hit. Brought the All old right. calculator out. Calculator came out. The battle actuary tapes. Battle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> battle it says I should overheat. Here we go. Yes, 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 Well, that's, one. One. Well, that's if you if you didn't just overheat, you wouldn't have gotten any. Just one. That was a not not good. <laughs> that was failed me on that one. So you still have armor left on that Mac. Your product pricing was off, son. <laughs> oh, this is just bad news. All right, so here we are, Athena, backing out of this fight, but I'm gonna take a couple of PPC shots at that vulture. Uh, the 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 what is it the what, what, what clan is that, or what uh, galaxy is that? Omega. Um, Omega Galaxy. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that clan jargon nonsense. Yeah. Uh, around here, we have <laughs> lances and companies. I understand your galaxy crap, son. <laughs> your numbers are wrong. <laughs> All right, so 2d6 for two points of damage, plus my pilot die. I'm looking for eights. All right, it is uh, dire straits here. My plan sort of crumbling here. I uh, really needed to take out one of these two vultures, but it just is not happening. This manticore needs eights, courtesy of his garbage gunnery, though he is at medium range. <laughs> <laughs> these guys just flunked out of the academy. That's why they're stationed on this, like, crap hole world in the middle of nowhere. This is like when you do the flyby on the tower, right? <laughs> you know, you get... You're in Alaska now, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. I'm not saying anything. Tom, don't say anything. All right, last broadsword's up. Broadsword firing up at this vulture from the alleyway down there. He is. Uh, oh, I didn't realize he. I didn't skill realize he two. was in the. It's tricky. It's tricky. Uh, skill two. Uh, he is at extreme range, so it's, uh, it's going to need eights to hit. And at extreme range, uh, this marauder does two points of damage. What a waste of a turn. I was going to say, watch, he's going to hit, though. He yeah, hit and one. he does. So, one point of damage. On my vulture? On the vulture. This is this is tough, guys. So, this is the end of turn four. But here's the deal, Tom. Here's the deal. Uh, what I see is I am in control of two quadrants. I don't think the Stormcrow made it in, did it? I don't think so. I don't think it is was... fully in. We can measure and check. Oh. Um... But I don't think it's fully in. I'm looking at the dividing line. I don't think it. The, the, remember, guys, if you're between quadrants, you count as being in neither. Yeah. Uh, however, I don't think my bulldogs are in your quadrant yet either. They're not. So at this point, nobody has like a majority control or just any sort of advantage. Right. It's just a wash. So it's still a zero-zero game. Yeah. But next turn, it's going to get ugly. It it's going to get ugly fast. Things are going to change. The, the winner and the loser will probably be decided somewhere in turns five and six. So, guys, stick around. It's about to get intense. Turn five, coming right up. Here we are, turn five. It's getting ugly, Tom. It's getting ugly. We have, we have some skirmish breaking out here on the mountainside. So, what happened? I lost initiative and also my soul in the last three minutes of commentary. <laughs> um, so... The awesome rallied, uh, but continued to move back. I uh, just wanted to get it in a better position for line of sight there. The King Crab uh, advancing, but just staying outside of medium range of that Storm Crow and the Vulture. Uh, hoping to delay in another strong shot. The Archer moving up as well, looking up that hill. Uh, so that's you know what I've got going on on that side. Also that Manticore stationary, relying on its turret uh, to hit those uh, those mechs out there. Now. The bulldog uh, that was in forced withdrawal, uh, or at least, box, yeah, <laughs> basically failed, uh, pulled back. The other two, yeah, set up a kill box for that miss links, but unfortunately ran this direction. Now, uh, he retreated. 
broadside or broadsword, I should say, broadsword. is about to get broadsided uh, yeah. by a bunch of tiny little elementals, which just just climbed off that missile. Dude, I'm, yeah, so weird. I love. I don't like them, Tom. I, I do love the little paint job, though. You These do. guys are so good. Yeah, they sure. do look great. I uh, I hate elementals. I hate everything about the clans. So <laughs> how about that? Uh, so the good news is though my SRM carrier does have some line of sight here because yeah, somebody didn't look to see some line of sight here. Yeah, it's hard to see from this angle, but basically the SRM carrier does have uh, a good shot on that Koshi. Really... It is in the back, but there is some cover, so we'll see. And also, like I said, those vehicle pilots are not very good. Uh, so Tom, on your side, aside from the Koshi or slash mislinks, uh, what else do you have going on? Yeah. Here? So once once you broached into my um, quadrant, I fell back with the mislinks onto you, and I came across with the vulture, because again, like, my thinking is mostly that he doesn't have a lot of armor left. <clears throat> he didn't have a lot to begin with, and so he, standing in the middle is a bad idea. So I figured I'd get him into cover. Yeah. <clears throat> and then these two again. Um, the storm crow is coming around and the uh, vulture backed up a little bit just again because not a lot of armor he'll maybe get a little bit of cover and yeah and you know keep people in the, in long range versus medium or something like that so got it all right well I need to keep somebody in that quadrant here we go so we've got some action happening guys the avatar knights and the, uh, the Lyran regulars they'll be starting off Tom hates when I shoot first, but guess what? I do. Initiative loser shoots first, Tom, so you got to deal with it. Hopefully my dice are hot. Guys, stay tuned. It's coming right up. All right, so starting with this, this Mance Core here. Uh, needs sevens to hit. Three points of damage. That medium range has that stationary buff. It is. All right, so that's a great opening, a good sign. A sign from the dice gods, Tom. So three points Oh, um, that storm. Well, you're supposed to roll that he has elementals. Ooh. So you're supposed to roll a d6, and on a 5 or 6, it hits the elemental instead. Okay, well, that would not be... Not good. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's a 4. Okay. So <laughs> takes that. And so I think that's for just the attack. Yeah, that's right, just, just for this attack. Okay. So more coming, though, Tom, more coming. So okay. keep those uh, those metal butt cheeks clenched on that Stormcrow. <laughs> uh, awesome, up next. He's got a Kalaka. <laughs> He's got those chicken legs. You make so many chicken references, Tom. I live uh, the chicken life now. I live in the chicken life. So the uh, the awesome does have a weapon hit, unfortunate. Uh, is at long range, so two points of damage only. Cannot overheat. So I need a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can we do it? Here we go. Nothing. Okay. Athena's been letting me down. All right, King Crab. Firing again at the storm crow. Can I put it out of its misery? Like, please, please don't, Lord. Please, Lord. Please. So, I need eights, just like everybody else. <laughs> um, you know, it's veteran pilots doing what veteran pilots do. But doing four the work. points of damage, Tom. Four Put, points of damage. Putting in the work. They're putting in the hours. You know, yeah. that's what they do around here. I mean, they're mercs. They're just trying to make some sea bells. Can I make my bonus? Looks like you're at least one, two. Oh my I God. See two. With the five, oh. I still managed to miss two, so only two points. Okay. Did I get through the armor? Did not. Got one. Unbelievable. Oh, but you roll a d6, you might hit the elementals. Oh, we gotta check that. Yeah, oh, I keep is, forgetting. This is the worst part of my life tonight. This is the worst part of my life right now. Six. Not anymore. So that's two points of damage to the elementals. Okay. Oh, um, all right, I gotta think about what to do next. This is not looking good. Lance Commander being swarmed by elementals. <laughs> Just evokes images of pilots being ripped from their cockpits. It doesn't seem very honorable. Like, I, I don't really understand, like, the clans are like, we're all about honor. Meanwhile, we're going to tear you from your cockpit and, like, eviscerate you. If you're if you're a bad enough pilot to get into this situation, <laughs> right? I, I assume that's what they're thinking, like, you well, deserve what you get. speaking of bad pilots, Tom, um, and bad decisions, yeah. I've got an SRM carrier in medium range of that mislinks. I don't know what that mislinks was thinking. I'm Here's what saying. I got. I got eights. I got eights to hit, and I have seven dice, courtesy of the rear shot. Can I make magic happen, Tom? Seven dice? That's cool. Seven dice? It what does kind of... six points of damage, Tom. What? All right. Here we go. With the Mercedes of Clan Max. <laughs> <laughs> that mislink surely is not. Okay. Here we go. Oh, 
Not even a chance that thing's surviving. Oh my goodness, it is just killed twice over. That Miss Lynx absolutely obliterated, but not before it drops that cargo off. So those elementals, Glad that they got off of that. Train. They're all they're all laughing. They didn't really like that guy anyway. <laughs> like what a jerk. Yeah. Um, so diving off that Miss Lynx is that that swarm of SRMs comes in. That's a big win. Uh, but unfortunately, it's the last one I think I have for this turn. So Tom, be prepared for vicious retaliation. Yeah, as much as I think he is. I think he is, guys. All right, so Jade Falcon coming up. Okay, Jade Falcon's up for some retaliation. Um, <clears throat> first up is the Stormcrow. Going into that Manticore, standing still, just trying to take him out. I need fours. This is awful. With five dice. And the Manticore has three pips you of three. Uh, structure left, so. So hopefully you roll a million ones. That's it, which is awful because I wish I would have hit something Just else. But. Blew right through the hull of that Manticore, yeah. uh, clan style. So that Manticore knocked out a commission, only leaving the King Crab and the Awesome on the near side here of this uh, this quadrant. The Archer not far away. Okay, next up, um, Vulture's looking for some retribution on the Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I am at long range. So I'm at uh, five, six, six is to hit. I got four at long. I cannot overheat at long. So there we go. So I say sixes. Seems seems crazy, but true. So, so four. Four points of damage. Once again, it finds her ejecting from the awesome. <sighs> that mech destroyed. Okay, now for my ambush of... Who's ambushing who, Tom? Yeah, I'm not sure, actually, <laughs> considering you already blew up one of my ambushers, but I think that's to be expected. Yeah, we'll this is not going to go good for this Marauder. I did not expect this uh, this this rapid redeployment. Yeah. Um, are you TMM2? Because you sprinted? Is correct, that, okay. correct. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Vulture, because he's the furthest away. Okay. Um, he's two, four, five, six. All right. So, we, so I need sixes. Uh, seems all too easy. Ouch. All right, so three points of damage onto that Marauder. Oh, snap! Yeah. That's a through armor through. critical. Unbelievable. All right, so... Just to start. Just to start. So this is already going... I'm just going to... Can I proactively eject? <laughs> critical hit. Particle cannon destroyed. Okay. All right. That's helpful. Um, okay. And then next up, I think the Miss Lynx. Mist. Mist. Miss Lynx. Miss Lynx. It's obviously a female pilot. <laughs> so she has four it's short. And so that's a plus one, so she's at three, five. Alright. Wow. Wow, only two. Now I will say that uh two points of damage, and for those of you that are wondering, Tom did intentionally leave some space in between the bases. Um so that the Miss Lynx could shoot the Marauder, even though I th they're touching. I think that's from when we bumped them. Uh, but that was declared during movement. So two points of damage onto that Marauder. And I'm in the rear arc. Should I do an extra point? Uh, you are not in the rear arc. Okay. You are not. You're not quite there. Even I, though I, I got I, shot in the back. Well, you got shot in the back. But I, I am not yeah. able to be shot in the back. Yeah. However, I only have one pip of armor left. And those elementals are up. So yeah. here they come. Okay, and last but not least, the elementals doing an anti-mech attack. This will be the uh, first anti-mech attack in DFA history. In, in DFA history, right? Tom, you're about to make history right yeah. now. So, it's true. So the elementals are in melee distance, so it's plus zero for the right. um, range modifier. Because remember, the optional rules are, you know, when you use the long range targeting modifiers, it's only for, you know, shooting. Yeah. So the standard, the normal modifier. Actually, let me rephrase that. Do you remember that. when we read that for like an hour? We did. Yeah. And then in addition to that, actually, infantry and battle armor don't apply them at all. So yeah. actually, infantry is on a normal 0, 2, 4, 6. So at short range or melee for these guys, it's 0. Just to clarify in case people were wondering. Yeah. So you need a 5 here. Yeah. Seems like a reasonable number. And actually, I'm sorry. You need a 7 here. Because we've, we've got his TMM of 2. So 4, TMM 5, two. 6, 7. All right, and so when we roll melee attacks, right, um, we talked about the targeting, it's plus zero. Also, melee attacks, just one dice roll. Even though we do the variable or multiple damage rolls normally for shooting, 
for melee, we house rule where we just use the rules as written. You roll once because it's like you're either going to get that critical, you tear off the armor plate or get to the cockpit, or you don't. Or same thing with a mech. You either hit him with a hatchet or you don't. Like, you know. Yeah. So that's how we do it. Um, so, Tom, 2d6, you're looking for a 7 plus. Can you do it? No. We'll see. I'm going to self actualize. I, I, was, I was listening <laughs> to Visualize them. Yeah. Matthew McConaughey talking about it, right? Was he in a Lincoln Navigator? Visu visualize a win, man. Visualize a win. All I right. love it. All right. Okay, so I need a seven. One lucky, lucky seven. Nine. All right, so Warning. 12 points of damage. Tom, that's going to be an internal shot plus an anti-mech critical. So you're going to generate two critical hits. This is ugly. Oh, no, and this Marauder already has taken a weapon hit. And um, the anti-mech is just a normal crit. Normal crit. So four, which is a fire control, a fire control hit. Wonder, oh, this is wonderful. Six is another weapon oh. hit. Unbelievable. Wow. So guns and things, sensors being torn, <laughs> just, just parts, parts, just yard sailing going, going. Yeah. <laughs> Off this marauder. They really are like little orcs or something. The, oh right? God, they really. <laughs> They're are. like wearing the plate armor when they come out. Like they oh, got all sorts God. of. One of them's carrying the arm like a gun. Unbelievable. Know? Uh, well, that is an unfortunate run-in down there, and uh, that, that's definitely on the wrong side of the train tracks in this, in this city. That's where the, them Jade Falcons hang out. <laughs> you get out of here now. <laughs> Go on and get... So, what do we have going on? Well, nothing else. Uh, again, that SRM carrier destroying the mislinks, the manacore, and the awesome up in smoke. God, these vultures just unable. I cannot bring them down. But here's the thing, guys. Tom, you're invading over here. But good news, my Marauder not in force withdrawal. Really? Okay. Just took one pip of internal damage. So we are each contesting one. We each control one. So once again, it's a 0-0 zero, zero game, guys. It is on uh, thin ice here for the Avatar Knights and their Steiner allies. So moving into turn six, stay tuned. It's coming right up. All right, it is turn six now, guys. Uh, this was an intense movement round. Yeah. I don't even remember who, I think I won initiative. You did. Uh, which is Tom's favorite thing, because he gets to shoot first. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about movement before you start dice rolling, yeah. Tom. So no. tell us about your strategy here. Um, I feel like I don't really have a lot of units to contest quadrants with, and the ones I do have are very vulnerable. The King Crab matchup to the Storm Crow is very bad. Yeah. Um, oh, if, so, I, if I can hit. Yeah, so I basically was just trying to get him a little cover. The same with the Vulture. I walked him back because, again, he really just needs to maintain control in that quadrant. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it would give him a little bit of space from people. Uh, the Elementals, they were kind of screwed. Sorry, guys. Um, I, I didn't really have anywhere to put them. And they had to move first. But they had to move before the Marauder did, so once that LRM carrier got into range, I figured I'd go after them. Okay. Um, and then the uh, Vulture, again, was trying to move away since I failed to kill that Marauder. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, yeah, that's uh, what uh, ended up happening. It, it is it's definitely a scrum now, especially in the city. It gets messy quick. Um, I'll start with what I did on the outside here. So. The King Crab is the, really the, the only mech holding down that back uh, right quadrant, for me at least. Uh, not sure what unit I'm going to shoot with. The Archer moved into the dead zone, trying to get him into that back corner quadrant there to cause some havoc. The Archer looking pretty good in terms of armor and structure. Now down here in the Crucible, um, this Bulldog recovered on his morale, so just kind of hanging out stationary right now. Um, the... SRM carrier, that's really only a, a two on the TMM, I don't know why, it must have, must have knocked the dice over there. Sprinted down the road trying to get some shots in. Um, and then this other bulldog, this fresh bulldog coming through the alleyway there, out into the open to support uh, and move into this, this quadrant here. So the last unit I moved was uh, my Marauder. Not yet in force withdraw. Still has um, five pips of structure left, but all messed up. Fire control, two weapon hits. Here's the thing. Fire control hits don't affect physical attacks, which is pretty good. So I'm just uh, moving in. I'm going to be stepping on some elements. Are we tools. in base to base? We are in base okay. to base. I can't shoot you, but I can 
of course, step on you, which is what I will be trying to do. I'll see how many elementals I can squash this turn. Uh, so that is basically it, guys. So we are moving on to shooting. Stay tuned. The Jade Falcons are going to be unleashing first. Okay. Since the Marauder decided to continue to tangle with my little brawlers, my street, my street, <laughs> street fighters. fighters. Yeah. <laughs> A little Zangief decided to turn around and do one of those uh, pile drivers on him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they're, they're all Russians. Taking it back. Yeah. So uh, again, with the melee attack, they're, I just rolled 2d6. Um, in base to base, he's right. TMM1, so they're skill 4, so 5. Yeah. Right? Because uh, you're, not, you're not sprinting this time, so your TMM's 1. 6, because right? plus 1, 4, an anti-mech attack. Just a okay, flat so six. fire. So 6 is what you need. Wow. Oh, I saw the one. I got so excited. I know. I got so sad. I got so, so excited, sad. but oh. no. So now that puts the Marauder in force withdrawal right out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, so he'll have to test his two. leadership and two critical hits. Yeah, two points of damage, two crits. Okay. Ouch. So he's going to have five potential critical hits. Five, I believe, is no critical hit. No critical hit. <laughs> but eight will be. Eight, eight is, is a, a weapon. Another weapon hit. So this mech... Zero points of damage, uh, just able to step on things. Broadsword, poor guy, just getting torn apart by these uh, these unknown clan foes yeah. here. And the vulture, the uh, marauder, looking at the vulture, thinking he's about to get side side blasted, but no, the vulture is looking right through him at that LRM carrier. SRM carrier, God. SRM carrier, <laughs> sprinting into range. Oh my goodness! Um, All right, so yeah, you're so I figured need... out. So two, four. Five, six. I need six. sixes. Yeah. Okay. This, is, this all seems too easy. Yeah. Too easy with these clan pilots. All right, here we go. Ooh, just one. Just one. And that gets a motive or no? It does have a motive check. It's true. Don't roll it Not even close. All, all right. right. So the, the heavily armored traps of that SRM carrier. That waste. Armor shielding holding up. That's scary. That's six points of damage rumbling down that street. Can't yeah. shoot this turn, but next turn he's closer. Be, yeah. Okay. Next up, the Omega, trying to get some more blood for their little legs, um, <laughs> firing at the uh, king crab. Yep. They're going to get blooded because they gonna, they, they, they each killed somebody. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh man. They, big, I think that's they a big it. deal. Yeah. For, it's a big deal. <clears throat> so, um, going after the king crab, long range. Uh, so that's uh, three, four, five. Six, so six sixes. Yeah, got it. Uh, maybe I'll do it here. Oh, all right, a nice flat area yeah. where you can roll ones. Okay, I got one. All right, so one more point on that king crab. Much and then uh, the vulture, the same, is going to go into the king crab as well. Missiles four flying. At, yeah, four at long range. Um, so same thing, so five, six. So sixes, right. he gets four. It's kind of an awkward thing. I'm going to come around a little bit. Uh, so two. So just a total of three points of damage to that King Crab. Armor still holding firm. That big 100 tonner. Just anchoring, three. Anchoring down that, three, uh, that quadrant. Three is an honorable amount of damage, I think. Right? <laughs> like, come on. Three's not bad. <laughs> these, aren't, mean, these aren't assault who, mechs. Who's counting, okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, no one feels inadequate here. Uh, all right, so Tom, I believe you are done shooting with your forces. Is that right? Yeah, that kind of petered out. It was looking good for a second. It was looking phenomenal. But we'll see. All right, so the Avatar Knights, Lion Regulars, coming up next. All right, so here we are. <laughs> Just this, this dance of death. Elementals all over the Marauder. The Marauder, uh, you know, just imagine that auto cannon just shredded. Uh, it's like when, Sweet uh, retribution. you know, when they put the stick of dynamite in the cigar. Oh, yeah, Bugs yeah. Bunny, that's what I, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, PPCs, arms dangling. But uh, Broadsword refusing to surrender. He only needs a four yeah. to hit, uh, guys. So remember, the, the sensor hit or the fire control hit does not apply to physical attacks. Um, it's at a zero uh, range mod. Plus one for battle armor, plus one for their TMM, and he is a, uh, he's an elite pilot. So just need a four here. Any of these numbers that, that are not two or three will do. So what, do we, what can we do? What does the stomp attack do? <laughs> Okay. Uh, so that does three points of damage time. So that is going to shake that little squad of elementals. They're going to have to test morale at the end uh, of this do turn. Do they have, like, crits? 
Uh, they don't. Infantry yeah. and battle armor have no crits, so there are no critical hits. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting, most infantry don't even have more than one structure point, but the elementals do. Um, so they have that, you know, that chance to kind of go into withdrawal, whereas uh, infantry there. just splatter. So, that is that. Is that. Uh, on this side of the table here, that SRM carrier cannot see... Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, it's sprinted, and the bulldogs cannot see. So you position those elementals in a place uh, that just, you know, they, they have no line of sight anywhere to the vulture. Hang the elementals. Little, uh, little courtyard. Exactly. So, moving on to the mechs here on the right side of my table. Tom and I just lamenting about these, these to hit numbers. I, I just can't seem to get anything under an eight. Uh, the king crab and the archer both have their eyes set on the vulture. I thought about the, uh, the storm crow here. Uh, what I was thinking though is if I destroy this vulture, there is nothing else in this back quadrant. If I destroy the storm crow, the elementals fall off. They can still potentially contest. Uh, so I'm going to try to get this vulture out. Um, so I need some good luck here, guys. I need some real good luck. Starting with the king crab, he needs eights. Here we go. Three. That's not a bad start. Now, that is not internal, unfortunately, um, on the vulture, right? It's just uh, just stripped armor. So now moving on to the archer. This yeah, is one where... one left of armor. The vulture? Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. He had four. He has four total, or like four, yeah, four remaining. Yeah. This is garbage, four. guys. I hate Clan Max. All right, so that's why you pay like but 90 points for the paint job on that one is that, nice. it is a, It is a pretty sweet paint job. I'm not going to lie, Tom. I love what you did there. Uh, so, all right, this this archer needs nines. This is not an easy number. Here we go. Six, seven, eight, nine. Just got one, though. It's not going to get, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough, No guys. more. I don't, I have nothing left to shoot with, Tom. Uh, we're done turn six. I mean, most of our turn, our turn time now is strategizing on, on what are our best angles of fire. <laughs> the one minute, yeah, or the one inch difference in movement. Yeah, so we, uh, we do have two units here that need to test for morale. Either way, neither of them can contest anymore. Um, and that's that. So I think you're going to get a point because you have that back quadrant over here, free and clear. You own this one free and clear. You're contesting this one here. And I have this one here. So you have two to my one. Two to my one as I throw dice in frustration time. Uh, so that means... Do I get any points for blowing up a mech? You no? get no points for that nonsense. Uh, but you do go up uh, one to zero so far in this game. So that is the end of turn six. So we're moving on to turn seven, guys. Stay tuned. All right, here we are, turn seven. Uh, things are intense. So... I won initiative again, which was very helpful. Uh, we had uh, some, some failures in the in the uh, the morale testing. So the elementals falling back, the marauder falling back, that bulldog still falling back. Um, other than that, I um, I responded with my king crab, backing him up just to the edge of that quadrant to keep him out of medium range of this this uh, storm crow here. My archer pushing forward into the middle. Uh, my SRM carrier pushing up there, and then I move my bulldog uh, to contest back here in this quadrant. Uh, so he's doing some, he's being a little cheeky back there, doing some some stealthy operations, as it were, in your in your rear quadrant. <laughs> so what do you have going on? Yeah, so elementals are um, falling back. The vulture came around to help out against this archer. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really have a great move with him. I was debating hiding him behind the building, but I said, Planner wouldn't really do that, I don't think. You know, it's hard to know um, for sure. You're probably right. I feel like they would press the attack. Yeah. Right? Because um, that was really the safe move, just to hide him and contest. Because yeah. here, the SRM carrier is too too dangerous. Yeah. Um, but this is what it is. Yeah. Again, the, the vulture moving backwards. The uh, storm crow dropped off the elementals in a cover. Because um, they were never going to get within range to do anything, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, just good to have them holding that, that quadrant, and then you can move that storm crow around. Exa yeah, so then, yeah, can be a little bit more aggressive with them. So that's what we're working with. All right, so, um, you start shooting. Yeah, so I'll start with the elementals. Okay, they have a little medium range shot. Okay, yeah, I got a medium range shot against the SRM carrier, uh, I think. Or, actually, am I already into the internal on the... The Marauder, yeah. Yeah. Does the SRM carrier suffer motive hits? Yeah. It does, yeah. Okay. 
Well, I'll, I'll go for the Marauder. Okay. Because, again, they're like anti-mech. Yeah. So they get one at medium. <laughs> Skill four. Is it TM five, six, one? Seven. Okay. Yeah. So sevens with one. So that's a critical hit, Tom. How many crits does this thing have in it? Three. Three. Is that an engine? Engine hit. hit. Oh yeah. God, this poor. This and thing then. is just <laughs> scrap. Yeah. So hey, again, another little pip. Good. Good for them. Uh, next up, I think I'm gonna attack the archer with my two vultures. So let's figure that out. So the uh, C gets three. Okay. Um, and they're probably a medium. So that's uh, two, four, five. So it's okay. fives. Three with a five. There we go. Gets three. Oof. All right, three points on the archer. And then the vulture will get four. Um, he's probably at long. Yeah. You think? Uh, he's definitely over 12 inches. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, probably 13, 14. 14. 13, 13, 13 and a half. 13.74. Yeah. Again, I'm going to talk about this later because I'm going to bitch about it, but bad position on both of these Omegas. They're yeah. I'm about to wipe that blood right off their legs. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a five, six. So he needs sixes. Okay. Here we go. Wow, so he's going to get all four. Yeah, so so that's seven archer, points. Just like that, seven points of armor stripped away. Okay, and last up on my side, the Stormcrow uh, is actually going to fire across with such good shots hitting that archer. He's going to do a long range for two oof, points. So he'll be at, um, again, five, six, right? All right. Yeah, so sixes. Gets him down two more. You're on fire. Wow. So that's a critical hit on that archer. Oh, God. That was... I thought that so was, close. It was so close. It's fire control. So close, but fire control is so big. Not the, yeah. This mech already with a heat penalty. That is a game changer. All right, well, uh, Tom, very quickly moving through his shooting. I'm going to be doing the same. Don't go away. All right, starting out with this SRM carrier. It needs eights targeting those elementals. It's not going to be easy. Let's see what I can do here. All you need is one. Oh, yeah. All right, so those elementals splattered in a barrage of SRMs. Feels good. Feels good. All right, this archer, prodigy. He's not feeling good. He's not feeling good about his odds, Tom. So he is uh, He's going to be overheating again. How much can he overheat? I can overheat uh, just one. Okay. So I'm going up to four points of damage here. I need eights. I need eights again. Uh, these clan mechs so hard to hit. Even at medium range, it's just nuts. All right, here we go. Everything. So that is four points of damage. Hopped. That time it paid off. The vulture destroyed in a hail of LRM and laser fire. That's big. That's real big. It's real big. All right. So this king crab. I was looking at the options. I really, really wanted to shoot this vulture, but he's at extreme range, uh, and I go down a die to three, and I need nines to hit versus getting four dice and needing eights against the storm crow. Uh, just too good to pass up. So, still though, you know, with the eights here, long range killing me tonight. You've been doing good. This is a good round so far. So far, lots of lots of dice hitting. Now that you said that, though. All right. Now that you said it, but I'm I believe Tom. I believe. So four more. Four points at a floating critical. All right, guys. So two crits. This could be big. The first Gauss rifle. Can I get two Gauss rifle head kills, Tom? First one. No. It's an eight. That's a what a weapon hit? Weapon. The second one. An eight that's a weapon hit. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I have uh, effectively Not neutered that uh, that uh, storm crow there, blowing off two arms, uh, is what I'd like to imagine. So it is in force withdrawal. Mm. It's got it's got three internal? Yeah. And I did one to it already, right? Yeah. So yes, that will do it. Uh you round, you round up. It's craziness, I know, I know. So, uh, that is that. Now, I am done shooting. Yep. You're done shooting, I'm done shooting. It's a bloodbath. Let's talk about points real quick. Yeah. So I own this quadrant. You own the back. And can test that one. You can test this. I own two in the back. Yeah. So that means I get a point. It's now a 1-1 game. All right, so turn eight coming up, maybe. Stick around, let's find out.
All right, here we are, guys. We are on the frozen backwater fringe world of anywhere, uh, and it is there's a brutal battle coming to a close here. So Clan Jade Falcon uh, being routed by combined forces of the mercenary Avatar Knights and the, uh, the Myron Regulars vehicle detachment. What happened here? Well, we talked about it. It was a nail-biter. It was a close one. But really, at the end of the day, uh, there was not going to be any way Tom could pull this out as he only had just one base of elementals left here tucked into cover probably would have had a hard time getting them out of there uh, and then this vulture who had about four pips I think a, maybe a pip of armor and three pips of structure possibly even just structure left uh, and you know on my side not doing so great either but that king crab still a force to be reckoned with uh, you know, four pips of armor, four pips of structure, and then the SRM carrier and that one fresh bulldog in the backfield there. So, broadsword in his, his marauder, what's left of it, like limping off this battlefield. <laughs> Dragging a foot. I mean, that's pretty great stuff. The early headshot on the adder. Guys, this one was packed with action. Hope you enjoyed it, but stick around. We'll do the after action report, and then we'll close this one out. There you have it, another clan invasion alpha strike battle report. Uh, this was a good one. This was much this was closer. Really um, I thought it could have gone either way. And there were a couple turns where I missed a bunch, a couple turns where you missed a bunch, and a couple turns where we both hit like everything, everything yeah. uh, at the end there. It was just a bloodbath. But it was really cool. I loved seeing the elementals in action. I love even more that that Marauder survived. Three weapon hits, fire control, engine hit, and I had two pips of structure left. You just couldn't could have yeah. put him, put them down. Two anti mech attacks <laughs> from the elementals. It was good though, dude. It was really yeah. cool. The heat didn't come into play, but you know the thing is this: the laser infantry were like one point less. I think you know it's not a substantial point difference. Do they and do I, the same amount of damage? Yeah, two, yeah. So two, two one points. It's just you get the heat ability. So I, I mean, I would take it. Because it was scary, and against vehicles, we were talking about, I remember you were like, do I shoot the SRM carrier? You do an extra point of damage, because they don't take and it. That's pretty huge. And then it becomes a th you know, three points yeah, of damage, if you're which in is... Rear arc, well, vehicles yeah, don't. they do, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, so, so four. All yeah, so, sudden, yeah, yeah so you're doing massive right amounts of damage. Um, speaking of massive amounts of damage, right, the, the Stormcrow, the Vulture, I mean, just so much dice. That Stormcrow's great. Five? The, the Mislinks saw... did four. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, that was miss... crazy. But it was, yeah, it was just a paper, but what do they call it, like glass can? Well, I mean, it got hit for seven points of damage in the back from, like, an SRM carrier. That was great. Yeah, that that was, was great. And that was completely my fault. Well, you know, we talked about it, and Tom was gracious. He was like, oh, should I take it back? And I was like, if you yeah. want. He's like, no, I'm going to leave it. Because I assume you didn't see that coming for your Marauder either, right? I would well, no, I did. That I was going to Yeah, leave. I totally did not see <laughs> yeah. that coming. So, so I was like, this is kind of fair. This like, is kind of fair. Yeah, I totally <laughs> didn't see the Marauder guy. <laughs> completely blindsided you laid your you laid your bait and i went for it yeah uh and conversely though you know that those vehicles when they come around the, the alleyways and the you know come down the street it's like you just don't see it that's a great thing about faster early warfare. Than I too. well yeah i mean when he when it sprints i mean it's the, it's not super fast but they're quick enough to get around corners and get yeah. line of sight which and is an alpha strike it's like urban warfare and alpha is so different from classic where right like, all those turns that's so awful yeah it's just it's it's way more deadly you spend six turns just like turning your vehicle yeah, it, around yeah it feels yeah. a lot more like what you would expect like this sort of ha ha got you out of the right, corner right like, yeah. ha, ha. right yeah right i love the kill box thing that you try to get me into <laughs> that was great I was trying so hard it's good you but, didn't fall for it i fell um, into your trap oh that's good yeah and and at the last turn yeah mm -hmm. i mean losing initiative two turns in a row when we're down to so few oh, units it's killer Kill, I mean, killed me. Well, allowed First me to, off, yeah. yeah, it allowed you to get into long range against the, um... Yeah, the Stormcrow. Stormcrow. Right, where I backed the King Crab out versus you being at four dice versus two. Right. You know, huge difference. Um, or in, like, with the Vulture, it overheat two, like, you could throw six I know, dice out. and I thought I would be there with him, but then I forgot he has the flame damage. <laughs> then I gave you the bait of my other Vulture, which I shouldn't have done. Um, I really should have 
I mean, honestly, you probably would have popped the other one, to be honest. I was going to double down on that on that one at the, in the back, or um, yeah. But and the problem is, is like once the vulture pops out against those vehicles, cool, you're going to do six damage to me. Like yeah, great. You know, yeah, like, the SRM carrier was was useful, um, you know, in this mission. I liked it, you know, kind of being the defender, right? You know, having having it in that back quadrant, just there to there to defend, right? Just there to kind of pick up whatever. Uh, whatever nasty clan things come around the corner. Um, well, I mean, the, the point balance seemed pretty good. We it took until turn seven to right to, to really, figure out to that really decide yeah, yeah who was the winner here. It was right. still and you know three hundred point game. We both came in with two hundred ninety seven point less, so it was dead even. Yeah. Um, and you had seven units. I had eight. I mean, I don't think that's a huge you know a huge game changer. The only difference is your elementals. Obviously, have a. A little bit less mobility than you know the vehicles do. Yeah, I mean for um, most effect in, in this game, I only had four, you know, five. five yeah, so. five. Oh, and I got that early headshot. That's so great. Man, that adder, that and that's a really cool mech. I very much yeah. like the adder. So hopefully that doesn't happen to it again. I but, love um, the adder. I mean, it's thirty points, overheat long, threes across the board for damage. Yeah, we we picked. I, I mean, yeah, I I spent a lot of time looking through the variants, and they're. The variants, I, I don't, I kind of forget with the IS mechs, but like the, the variants for the clans were like all over the place. I mean, yeah. even the two vultures I picked are very noticeable. So different, different. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so, it, it, like, critical for mech selection, like, spend the time. So, what I did on the master unit list is I basically popped every variant up to just look across at all the stuff and then delete yeah. them out and then added the next four, figured out which one I which wanted to yeah. delete. Them Smart. Out. Smart. And, and that way you can really see, and then you can also check out the points because that was the other big thing. Some of these variants, the point delta is like 20. Like that's cra that's crazy. So, and and at first I picked another weird master unit list thing is like what, what with the elementals, right? Yeah, like, it's like the three I, man maybe units. you guys know I could we could only figure out how to bring up the four man unit, which is like 17 points. So of course I pulled it into the the DFA list yeah, builder with the card generator and all that stuff. And you're able to kind of do it that way. I could not figure out how to pick the right elementals. Yeah. And they also have like these space variants. <laughs> space I, which elementals. Are, yeah, which are I want some cheaper, space right? elementals. Yeah. yeah, they were. Well, they have less armor and stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's why. So they were. Yeah. So there was a little bit of that. So make sure you're picking like the me the the unit you think you are, and then spend the time to sort of pick your variant uh, to the to the match. Yeah. I knew we would be doing. A scenario, and in almost every scenario, it, it pays to have long range. I've been in a situation where I got a bunch of short range mechs and just yeah, got just, dominated. You can't, you can't play the game without long range, in my yeah. opinion. And the vulture and the uh, the adder, and actually both vultures and the adder, like all really good. You hit me hard. I mean, you wiped the awesome off the table almost immediately, and yeah. that thing has tons of armor. Yeah. You know, and that's not an XL engine variant. It's just a uh, you know, it's got gobs of structure, gobs of armor. Yeah. Yeah, That's I thought really, it was great. Yeah, and then the last thing I was gonna say before you can you, you can do your IS BS um, is that like really what I kind of thought was gonna happen <laughs> happened in a way too. Glass cannons, man, like right. not a lot of internal, and, and I think that's an artifact from uh, of the XL engines. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The XL engines take up a bunch of side torso stuff, yeah. and therefore in alpha you just don't have those internal pips. Yeah, and like as soon as you start taking damage. You're like you're sweating. Like I was sweating as yeah. soon as as soon as the the armor started coming down. It's like you don't. There's nothing behind it. Right. There's nothing there. Yeah. yeah. Two and three pips. Yeah. So, uh, and that affects force withdrawal and also just blowing blowing yeah. the mech to bits. Yeah. So that's my recap. I think it, yeah. I mean, more balanced than I thought it would be. Yeah. So good good job there. I th I think. Yeah. Mech, mech selections and very important. Yep. And this was a lot of fun. I mean, it's really fun to have big damage, fast moving mechs. I, I will say too, the thing I noticed, you outmaneuvered the crap out of me this whole game. You made me work for everything. Yeah. Uh, it was so hard with these bigger, slow mechs. Like, yeah. But you, but you played them as I, you know, you, you have you have a tendency to do the board do the center domination strategy on these. <laughs> you do. He does. He does. He, he stays. He usually set, sets like a center line so that he can like branch off from them. Right, so I keep your you. options open. I know Gotta you. keep your options yeah. open. And that's why I sort of came up the side here yeah, it was smart. to push you that way. Yeah. But it um, was great. I mean, tactically, it was, fun, was yeah. very challenging for me, uh, which I enjoyed. And yeah, I mean, as far as mech selection goes, a lot of these are my bread and butter mechs. Love the Marauder. Dude, I love the Archer. 
there's so many pips when I, when we were like looking at the cards. I was just like, how am I ever going to kill these things? I was like, yeah, there's so many. But you do so much damage, damage. you but just melted them. Then all of a sudden, and you yeah, were smart. Like, you focused. Yeah. You know, you didn't like spread your damage around. Um, and the vehicles were good. They were a nice little addition to keep you on your toes. I learned my lesson from past games where like you can't ignore them. You can't just ignore can't. Because in the end of the game, you saw back here. Bulldog. They start to come. They, yeah. <laughs> Bulldog. <laughs> it's like the, the, uh, the apocalypse now. He's got the, the loudspeakers. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they really do. They come back to bite you in the ass at the oh, end. Oh, they do. Um, in a way that mechs tend to peter off at the end. They have like an inverse. Yeah, they, right. They, they, oh my goodness, it's true. I do love them, uh, and they're low profile. They're easy to hide behind stuff, like you kind of did with your elementals up here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was great. I liked. I, I'm still, you know, we tested the new morale rule. Yeah. I think we need to tweak it a little. I threw bit. some I liked ideas it. out about it. You know, I do kind of feel like maybe if they fail it once, they're done. I don't know. We got we got to watch. Open to ideas. I do kind of like that too. Like you, you know, can't just endlessly like test from keep around. keep testing, or maybe it's harder to come back. Yeah. I don't know. We got to think about that, it. Yeah. But it, I do like the idea that like you're just not automatically going to flee. I like that we're putting a little bit more value and skill, and it does balance out when you are paying a premium for equipment and things on your mech where I don't think you should be. Um, I think that extra, you know, how using skill for morale is kind of a cool thing. And it is in I think Strategic Ops or one of those books. There's optional rules for for morale based stuff. And it might even be in the Commander's Edition. They have some flavor of it, so we'll look at that too. Anyway, um, overall, anyway. it was it was a great game. Um, yeah, man. A couple of public great service game. announcements. If you uh, yeah. want to help us out, guys, we are uh, on Patreon, patreon.com slash DFA Wargaming. Fresh and new. Fresh and new. There, you know, so there's three levels, dollar, five dollar, ten dollar. The one dollar tier, you know, really appreciate the support. Five dollar tier, you get access to all sorts of digital downloads. Um, we've got the blip counters, the STL files available now. We've got our Alpha Strike toolkit. So that's a converter from classic to Alpha Strike. You can, you know, basically Valuable. generate cards. Uh, you can catalog all of your cards, like so for your whole collection. It's really cool. Yeah. So um, if you're, yeah, I just want to stress on on the converter, like if you're a classic player, a big barrier is taking all those variants and stuff that you spent time building your your mechs and getting them to alpha. Yeah. And this this it's, does it yeah, for you. It. Just plug in a couple of things and you get your cards. So it's beautiful. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and so there's that. The other thing I wanted to say is thank you to Polygon Masterworks. Again, your King Crab is phenomenal. Love the model and also it did so well tonight. So just all the better. Just made it all the sweeter for me. Polygon Masterworks, I have something to tell you tonight. <laughs> Hit your King Crab. I'm going to smash it after the video. You will do nothing of the sort. Send some clan mechs. <laughs> No, it's, it is it is a really oh, awesome. Oh my like, goodness, like, it is. It I is mean, in really all cool. the new scopes, I the love. Right. Yeah, I love having the new plastics oh, on the feels board. Good, right? Catalyst again. Great job. The the, the vulture is like my favorite, mm. and I got two of them on the board tonight. Yeah, thanks. Because I brought the wrong mechs. <laughs> but you know, it worked out. It happens. We still fit a list. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it actually balanced out even better. It, I, I think yeah. it was even better. Yeah. Um, and you know, of course, stuff. if you want to get your own plastics, uh, you want to get an Alpha Strike book, you want to buy some Army Painter paints. Where yeah. do we go, Tom? A A A A Aries. Aries. Aries and some miniatures. And miniatures. And miniatures. Dot com. It's not just games anymore. It's not miniatures. just games. And miniatures. And he's got the new stuff coming in, guys. Yeah. Keep your eyes peeled. Uh, very soon, I think uh, that will be available. Um, so yeah, can't again, more. you know, de I mean, you and me both, dude. Uh, Derek's got all the goods, and of course, the you know, the Iron Wind Metal stuff is still great. There's a lot of things that they're not re, uh, you know, they're not rebuilding or remaking into plastic, right? Um, so there's a lot of mechs out there that, that are still great to get your hands on from Iron Wind Metals that he carries as well. Um, other than that, Tom, dude, good game. So. Yeah, good game. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. We don't really do much on Instagram besides follow other people. But hey, I don't we, we got some stuff on yeah. there. Uh, you know, Discord, of course, as well. And uh, our soundtrack, which you listen to tonight. Uh, you can get that on all the major streaming services. Uh, put that on the background while you play your game of Battletech. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's it. We're wrapping up, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Tom, closing thoughts? I can't wait. More. More, more, more. More, more, more. more. Guys, stay tuned. So much more coming. Always great stuff coming from yeah. Death From Above Wargaming. Have a great night.